Don't tell Toby I bought a new helmet. Anyway, here we are. Welcome to Radicam TV. This is my current K-Bird Tormax helmet. It's the third, fourth one I've had, I think. Um, I've only had this a month, and unfortunately, I've just come back from a trip to Norway, and I dropped it, and I've cracked all the back. Uh, it dropped off the back off my seat. I never put the helmet on my seat, and I see so many people on tours dropping them. I was distracted, put it on the seat, and it fell off. Not only did I do it once, I did it twice, which, like, I feel really embarrassed to tell you, but I am an idiot, clearly. And so, I've looked for a new helmet. Now, I really like this helmet. It does everything I want it to do, but in the spirit of um, being different, I thought I'd try something else. So, I'll just put this over here, which is out of the way. You can probably see it. I bought this little rascal. And this is the LS2 Metro Evo and it is in fluoro yellow as you can see I really love the color in real life it is so deep it's uh, it's not metallic it's just a really lush color it's got the peak it's got a, a visor and it has an internal sun visor so it ticked all my boxes the best thing was though it's the same price as the K-Bird uh, Tormax and I got it from sports bike up in Northampton sports bike shop and um, they sent it down, uh, I was away last week, so I had to order it last week. And uh, it was here on Monday, delivered by um, one of those well-known um, delivery organizations, DPD. The reason I had to change the helmet, obviously I, I dropped the white helmet and it cracked. And um, when I was riding through Germany back to get the ferry in Harwich last week, I noticed that more and more water was actually pouring in through the visor. So it sort of told me that the shell had been compromised a little bit. So that's the reason I ordered this. Now. As you can see, I've fitted the um, Interphone Tour um, comms, blue, blue, uh, Bluetooth comm system on it, and I've also fitted my um, drift uh, camera to the side of it, so it didn't come with that, so don't expect it to. But I've also fitted a little um, ID bands uh, Meditag thing because I fit them to all my hats, all my helmets. So let's have a look at this helmet quickly. Has the visor. Now the visor, disappointingly, comes very close to the um, the peak. Sorry, it comes very close to the visor. So I had to do a little bit of adjustment. It's only tightening up screws and things to get it to come away. So that's um, that's pretty pretty okay. Inside, I don't know if you can see the helmet. It's got a ratchet lock instead of a D lock, and I'm still getting used to uh, the adjustment of the size of it. But it's pretty easy to do. Obviously, I've got my uh, microphone here for the for the comm system um, and I fitted that that wouldn't normally be there this neck collar comes out when you fit it and everything is just on poppers so it all come out and is washable which is pretty cool there has not been a sharp test on this yet um, but you know is the sharp test any good I don't know I certainly don't want to spend a lot of money on a helmet and people go, oh, you know, your helmet will save your life and everything. But when a K-Bird Tormax gets the same score as a Shoebirth, I sort of think, do I need to spend 600 quid plus all the Bluetooth stuff as well for it to go wrong? The answer is probably not. And I can do three of these and I've still not spent it. So, Sun Visor. Sun Visor is amazing. Okay, it's even got a little lip so you can push it up with your fingers if you don't want to use the, uh, the, the, the mechanism on the side here. But... It actually comes down a long way, more so than the K-Berg. I got sunburned around this area of my face last year in Croatia because the, the K-Berg doesn't come down that far. This one completely covers your face almost to within about 25 mil of the chin guard. So it's operated by, a, by the lever on the side here, which is so simple, so simple. The K-Berg has a thing on the top where you have to do that, and if you've got a peak, you've got to fiddle around with it. If you have a camera on the top, like a GoPro or something, or well, the cameras are available, you can also, you can get lost, and oh, it's just, an, I found it hard. But then I'm very simple. Okay, so the chin guard is lifted using a little notch on the front here, and you'll see that there's um, a cover. I'll just lift, 
pull the visor back up so you can see it. There's actually a wind guard here. Um, I've put it on. I don't think I'll need it for my next trip, which is uh, in a couple of days' time down to Dubrovnik, but I'm going to try and see what it feels like, get used to it. It has vents here in the front of the helmet. If I just close this down a little bit, okay, you'll see there are vents here. Really simple. And I've been out on the bike today and I felt that you can feel the, the draft of air coming through, which is going to be quite good because I'm in the uh, I'm going to be in hot countries in the next few days. On the top, it has two little vents as well, which can be opened. Okay, and they exhaust down to the back of the helmet. Something the Kberg doesn't have, um, which means that it's a bit sweaty in there sometimes. So hopefully this, when it's got a bit of wind going through, it will cool my head down. Nice little deflector on the bottom. Um, which uh, it seems to be the norm now for a lot of helmets. And it's got a really sort of compact shape to it. It feels the same weight as my uh, Kberg. I'm not going to be alien, anal enough to weigh it and see if it actually is, but it does feel pretty much the same. I read reports on this before I bought it saying that the visor oscillates and I had the same thing about the Kberg. You have to ask yourself, if you're riding a sport bike, why, why would you need a peak? because I would say that's the wrong, it's not what it's aimed for, the market. Um, and I've done 70 and a bit on this, on my, my bike and another bike I was riding earlier, a bagger. Um, and you know, there's not that much oscillation. So you have to ask yourself how fast you're riding with one of these things, you know. Normal speeds, I would say it's perfectly fine. It's only held on with two screws one either side, so it's really simple to get off. And to change the pin lock visor, all you have to do is take the screws off, the chin guard falls off, and it's just two little clicks and it'll come off. You can actually use this without the visor, if you the peak, if you really wanted to. All in all, I think it's a really, really smart helmet. And I love it already, it's very tight. Um, but I'll go out for a ride on it and I'll let you know how I get on. Okay, here I am, just picking up my bike from Ocean Falmouth. Now I'm going to do a quick review while I'm driving along of my new LS2 helmet, which I've already spoke about. In some ways it's as good as the Kberg, in some ways it's better. Um, so I better qualify that, hadn't I? It feels tight. I've got the medium size helmet, although some might say I've got, I should have had a bigger one. But uh, I got the medium one, and obviously it's very snug to begin with because I've just put it on. And unlike the Kberg, there's no protection from the earpieces of the Bluetooth headset I've got in here. So that sticks onto a little recess inside the helmet. And when I first put the helmet on, I could feel that the speakers were, you know, close to my ears. Um, well. It, closer to my ears, I could actually feel my ears touching the Velcro and consequently the volume in the helmet is louder than my Kberg. So when I was riding along I was wondering how this was going to impact the actual ride as well and you know with regards to wind noise and things like that. Now everyone whinges about flip top helmets, personally I can't see the problem with them, you know it saves me taking my helmet off when I go into a garage um, and when I'm riding blood bikes in and out of hospitals, whipping your helmet off all the time, it just gets a pain when you're carrying lots of stuff. So to have a flip up helmet is wonderful, I think. So I think um, they're great. Obviously they're noisy because you've got a big piece of floppy plastic that lifts up and down and that causes issues for, you know, with regards to wind and wind noise because obviously wind gets into some of the nooks and crannies. But this helmet, I believe is quieter than the Kberg. Now I got this from Sport Bike Shop and I asked them about the sharp rating. This one hasn't been done yet uh, or hasn't been tested yet. Uh, I had a good conversation with a guy about uh, you know the sharp test and he said well some some helmets perform better, some helmets don't perform better, uh, well at all in it. And there is some conversations going on about whether the test is a valid test or whether it could be done differently, I don't know. Um, 
but you know, this hasn't been tested yet. That said, the Kberg beats things like the Shubath, um, it gets a better safety rating and things like that. So this helmet hopefully will come up to the same sort of stand because I think motor manufacturers now realise that they can't just put a piece of garbage out and people will buy it. It has to tick certain boxes. So for me, I'll have to comfort, obviously spend a lot of time riding a motorbike and I want a helmet that will mould itself quickly to my head and not be giving me headaches and all the rest of it. And I also need a helmet. I've got the Hellite vest. And I, some helmets actually catch on the back of it because it does come quite high up your back because when it goes off it paralyzes you, it, well it's paralyzed but it holds your neck in place as well so I need something that will be comfortable with a helmet and this has ticked all the boxes. So I've been riding around right now for about three hours and it's very comfortable. It's obviously tight because it's never been worn before but each time I put it on it's getting easier so I'm, I'm very very confident this will be an excellent helmet, just pausing there because this is a bit of a nightmare roundabout. It's just been invented and people don't really understand how to go around it. Okay, so, things about this helmet then. It has, I believe, a bigger, wider vision than the Kberg I've been used to. I've had three Kbergs now, and they're, you know, they're brilliant helmets. This costs the same price, as I've already said, and um, it can pin lock ready different type of pin lock with screws in it on this one. Some of the older pin locks are just the pop in and out plastic bit, but this one has a screw that makes it more difficult to move around. But fitting it and taking off the, uh, uh, the flip part of the helmet, two screws, I mean, it's a bit of a faff because I hadn't done it before, but now I've done it once, I won't, it'll be fine. I won't have to worry about it again. Pin lock is, uh, uh, Pinlock's pinlock, it fitted really easy, fitted snug first time, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, it has a sun visor inside, a fitted sun visor, or drop down sun visor inside the helmet, which I've shown. And this is an amazing bit of kit actually, because a lot of sun visors don't cover the, the area you want them to cover, but this one drops down, it's actually below the level of my nose, which is uh, quite something, because the old Kberg, if you had a, a, a large nose, you could catch your nose on the actual sun visor, uh, you know. On the new helmet that I just bought and replaced again, they had a cutout for your nose, uh, which worked really well. And this one has a cutout, but it actually, the top of the cutout, if you would imagine, comes to just below the level of my nose. So this forms quite a big uh, sun barrier, if you want. The curved drift mount was too curved to put it on the helmet, so I had to put a, the straight one on and just use two pieces of sticky back uh, tape, which is like proper Blue Peter stuff, isn't it? And that seems to have done very well. And it was a bit similar to the, uh, the Interphone Tour set as well. That seemed to struggle a little bit, but a little bit of jiggery-pokery and, and it sorted itself out. And it, now it's seated properly. It might not look 100%, but it'll do it for me. So overall, I really quite like the helmet. Time will tell, I'm off to Croatia on Friday uh, for a 16 day tour. So if I come back looking like a pinhead with uh, constant headaches, I'll <laughs> you'll know it doesn't work at all. But I think, uh, I think it's gonna be okay. So, be good Rider Cam TV tradition. If you like it, give us a big thumbs up. There's always a couple who don't like it. But you know, we value everyone's comment and there'll be a subscribe sticker there somewhere we're over 6,000 subscribers now so it's getting up and i believe we've had well over um 1.6 million views which is amazing and um eventually uh, this will be on the on the thing for you to watch so thanks very much for watching see you soon